today's podcast, I'm going to be discussing with Professor Paul Tipton his career and of course his cricketing career before he became a very highly respected dentist. I'm also going to be learning more about his teaching academy and what kept him busy during lockdown. Finally, we're going to be talking about a government initiative called Kickstart. First of all, tell me a little bit about your history and how did you get to where you are now today? Because it's always interesting to hear the backstory. Mm, Well, the dentistry was a bit of an accident for me. So my first love, and it probably still is my passion, is cricket. So uh, at school, I was not the most studious of, uh, of students, of young guys. Uh, and I ended up playing a couple of years for England under 19s when I was at school. Uh, and that was my pure focus. My focus was that I wanted to play cricket for Lancashire. Um, uh, and at that stage, I was playing for the under 19s. Uh, India were over and we played three test matches against India. Uh, I did rather well and I was looking at a a career in cricket. Um, My careers master at, uh, I went to Stockport Grammar School. My careers master suggested, you know, okay, Paul, we know that you're not the most diligent student, but why don't you look at something that may help you during the off season? You know, cricket is obviously a summer game. During the off season, what are you going to do? And so I thought, yeah, okay, you're right. Let's let's look at something. And he suggested dentistry. Uh, and he suggested dentistry purely because uh, you he understood the, the locum system and he understood that you could probably get a locum job for three, four, six months whilst you played your cricket. So that was my aim, to go and uh, do cricket with dentistry. And I knew nothing about dentistry. Um, it wasn't a chosen career just something that would allow me to play my cricket. So uh, I had a year off between school and university and I went and played for Lancashire. I went on the staff as a professional, as a junior apprentice, as it were, for a season. Uh, Loved it, but uh, I started to see some of the reality of being a cricketer. And most of the cricketers at that stage were not particularly well paid. Uh, During the winter time, they either went abroad Uh, and did some coaching, or they got manual, menial jobs. Um, One was a a dustbin man, another one um, worked in a pub. And so uh, I suddenly started thinking, maybe this isn't the glamorous lifestyle for me. So I went off to university, fully thinking that I'll just do my dentistry and then I'll go back to cricket. And I suppose over the the course of the dental... um, journey the the dental curriculum it started off being you know cricket up here and dentistry down there and it started to do this and at the end uh, my enthusiasm for dentistry was uh, greater than my enthusiasm to be a professional cricketer so after th- uh, one full-time year at Old Trafford and four half-time years where I, I went on to the staff from uh, June to September during the summer vacation I decided that it wasn't for me and I'd rather pursue a a career in dentistry. Uh, And the one thing it did set me up for, which I'm thoroughly grateful, is when you're playing sport, you have to work very hard. Uh, You have to put the hours in. And that uh, saw me well in dentistry. Uh, And I've always been a hard worker and I've always put the hours in uh, to try to make the most of, of my opportunities. So that was the initial part. I then qualified uh, went in to work in Doncaster because I went to Sheffield University. Um, Doncaster, difficult place in those days. You're talking minor strikes. We're talking um, mining towns, which are sort of closing down. The communities are very, very uh, unhappy. And generally, I didn't enjoy my dentistry whatsoever. I was taking teeth out, fracturing most of the teeth, um, sending them off to Doncaster Royal Infirmary and thought, no, this isn't for me, let's have a rethink. So I rebooted and went off to Australia for 12 months. And I worked over in Perth. I played cricket over in Perth at Scarborough Cricket Club, which was fantastic, on the coach on the coast. So I was living on an apartment, a little rented apartment on the beach. Fantastic. Uh, and did 12 months over there. And got my mojo back, my enthusiasm, and managed to find my way into a private practice in central Manchester. I'm a Manchester lad. So it seemed like I was coming home. And that was it from being then in a mixed private NHS practice. uh, I decided that, yes, that was the sort of work I wanted to do. 
I was there for a couple of years. My principal left. He was a, a Jewish gentleman. He left and went to uh, back to Israel. I had the opportunity to buy his practice, which I did. Uh, I inherited a lot of very, very high-end private patients, and I found that my dentistry wasn't good enough. And so I took myself off to the Eastman and did a two-year master's degree at the Eastman. Uh, and that really got me into the teaching part. Uh, came back, this is now probably uh, late 80s. Came yeah. back, set up a new private practice, a squat. Uh, I'd sold the other private practice I'd bought to finance the two years in London at the Eastman. Uh, and so set up a squat, uh, worked there two days a week. It gradually increased over a period of 15 years, uh, increased to six surgeries, fully private, specialist clinic, etc. Uh, and then I got a little bit bored, I suppose, of running a practice. Uh, as the practice increased, increased the amount of time, as, as I'm sure many dentists will, will look at and agree with, the amount of time I was focusing on running the business as opposed to doing dentistry mm. increased. And so I sold the, the dental business in uh, 2008, I think it was, and concentrated on the teaching. So at that stage, up to 2008, I was probably doing four days clinical work and one day's teaching. Uh, after I'd sold the business, I wanted to concentrate on three days, three and a half, even four days teaching and one to two days clinical, which is where I've been for the last sort of 12, 14 years. Um, we've now got a lovely academy in the centre of Manchester. Yes, now that, that's a nice segue into about the academy. One question for you before we talk about the teaching academy. When you were in Australia, were you not tempted, because it sounds amazing, I know you said you're a Manchester lad, but were you not tempted, Paul, to stay out in Australia or have you been tempted to go back since then? Yeah, I've, um, tempted very much so. Um, I'd set myself up to just go there for 12 months. So I had a, uh, a house back in, in Sheffield where I was living at the time. I had a car parked in the, the car park or and in the garage and I had a group of friends there. So after 12 months, I came back with the view to... I'll spend six months back in the UK, uh, get my act together, and then probably go back full time. And of course, as things happen, um, that six months um, changed me. I went to Manchester, I got involved with a, a young lady, and the going back to Perth got pushed backwards and backwards and backwards. And so it never happened. Um, I love the place. I've been back to Perth probably five or six times since, uh, teaching. Uh, my son went to, uh, had a year off and went to Perth as well, played cricket at Scarborough as well. So I went over and visited him there. Uh, but I was very tempted. Perth is a beautiful place. I love Australia and Perth is, yeah. is fabulous. I just, I love the place. No, it's lovely, isn't it? Our daughter lives in New Zealand, in Christchurch, South Island. But we also have um, a cousin lives in Australia, in Brisbane. So it is a lovely place. Um, and I know it certainly used to be a real lifestyle choice. When I was in dental recruitment, before I got into practice sales, um, I worked very closely with somebody who used to get lots of dentists over to Australia and New Zealand. Um, but obviously that's not as easy now as it was. In the next section of our discussion, I'm going to be discussing with Paul about his world famous teaching academy. It, uh, it probably, I stumbled into it. I stumbled into the teaching. Once I got my, my master's degree, uh, one of my mentors was a gentleman called Michael Wise, um, yes. who was, uh, Hello. yeah, so a, a lot of people, some of the older generation will know him. He had a lovely yeah. practice in the centre of London and was the top restorative guru at the time. So I well, went I had the pleasure did... of selling Mike's practice when he retired. Oh, really? Really? Yeah. So yeah, that's why you'll see his testimonials plastered on the occasional billboard and, and um, banner at um, events. Or so certainly they used to be. And I used to ring him up and ask for permission to put him somewhere else, yeah. so to speak. Yeah. But yes, I did. Yeah. Um, yeah. He was, uh, he was a, a superb dentist and superb teacher. So I, I went and trained with Mike for three consecutive years and understood the way he trained people and thought, okay, well, Mike's retiring. I'm going to do something in Manchester. So that's how I, I realistically set up the, the teaching academy in Manchester. Initially, it was in St. Anne's Square on the back of my, my practice. Uh, I had a room at the back of the, the practice, which I did my teaching in. 
Uh, but I then thought that I needed to make it a little bit bigger. I enjoy teaching. I love passing on the knowledge that I've gained over the years. Um, and so that was the change, the change in 2008 to sell one place and get another place. Um, we've now got the Teaching Academy on the outskirts of Manchester, which has got, oh gosh, 10 uh, booths, as in a, um, a universal den dental school, university dental school. Uh, people understand booths, so it's four foot high um, glass partitions, so we can see over the top of them. Um, we've got a phantom headroom, we've got three or four different teaching facilities uh, where we can do our lectures. Uh, and we've also got three or four private rooms as well. So uh, that's that's lovely where we are. Um, we're expanding. We we work in the Middle East. So we've got a, a teaching academy in the Middle East in uh, Dubai. Uh, we set that up about five years ago with a, a company called CAP. Uh, they're our partners in the Middle East. And from the Middle East, we do trainings in uh, Saudi Arabia, Kuwait. Um, I'm going over to Iran and Iraq for the first time in the new year to do some training over there. Uh, it's also a base for going to Singapore. So I probably spend uh, one to two weeks every uh, two months over there. So mm -hmm. we go four, five, six times a year for a couple of weeks uh, and do our teaching. And uh, and the teaching's been you know, an integral part of, of my life and I, I love it, passing on the knowledge to the uh, to the dentist, it's unfortunate, as again, many dentists out there listening, it's unfortunate the dental curriculum is probably not as good as it should be. And lots of dentists don't get any uh, hands-on training or as much hands-on training as they should do. And we feel there's a real niche for us uh, in mm -hmm. the marketplace to uh, get hold of some of these younger dentists and older dentists. We, we do get uh, a number of dentists who've been in practice for 20, 30 years still wanting to come back and relearn to get their enthusiasm back for dentistry. Uh, and we teach them basically the basics of dentistry. Occlusion is one of my pet topics. Uh, it's taught very badly, if at all, at university. And uh, it's, it's the foundation of dentistry. And if you don't know occlusion in my eyes, then you're not a dentist. You're just a, a filler of holes. And we try to make dentistry fun. We try to make it so that it's an absorbing career for somebody. Mm. Um, that they can enjoy uh, and you only really enjoy a topic if you understand it uh, and we feel that we can get that understanding across to our, our dentists so they go out not only understanding the topic but also full of enthusiasm for the years ahead. Yeah. Enjoying it because as you say it's if you can feed that enthusiasm and that passion otherwise you know often we often in, in our line of work we meet many principals Paul and I'm sure you do too who are, they've, they've lost the love of dentistry, the passion has gone. And a lot of it, I think, is because they work so much on their own. It's a very secular thing, you know, they often, unless they work in an environment where there's lots going on and other associates or partners, they're very much alone and they be, it's quite lonely. And, and as we know, that there's a lot of depression and, and problems associated in the profession. But the, the kind of training that you give, I mean, it's, it's world leading and it's so important to feed this young blood coming through the ranks because they feel part of something very big and, and there's all these tools, these learning opportunities and it's really great. What's not to love? I think, as you say, anyone that thinks that they're qualified and they think, well, I'm done, that's it now. Yeah, it, it doesn't work like that. It may have done <clears throat> in the previous generation, uh, but it's yeah. certainly not now. Uh, dentistry is, is a tough profession to be in. Make no bones about yeah. it. And everybody out there listening <clears throat> will understand that. The stress that people yeah. are under uh, <clears throat> stress from GDC, stress from litigation, uh, stress from mm -hmm. patients who uh, are more aggressive to them. I see all the time on Facebook patients who are being aggressive um, to to younger dentists. Uh, and it's not unless you take hold of your career uh, and not be passive about it, be active about it and shape your own career, then it can be, as you mentioned, a lonely place and a depressing place. Uh, yeah. And that's what we try to do. We try to teach dentists not only the academic side, the practical side with your hands, but also instill a confidence so that their work becomes predictable. And, and that's the word that comes through all our teaching. Make life predictable. And if dentistry is predictable, where you can look somebody in the eye and you can say, this is going to work and these are the costs and have a positive body language, then you're the person in charge. And it's yeah. nice when you're the person in charge. 
as opposed to being the person, the dentist who has to react to things. And that's important. In the next discussion with Paul, I'm going to be finding out more about what kept him busy during lockdown. So lockdown, I really enjoyed lockdown. I have to say that first of all. Um, We live in a converted farmhouse, uh, lots of fields and woods around us. So we went out for lots of walks. We've got four dogs. I've got four kids, four dogs. The four kids came home. They're in various parts of the world and the country. One of them brought uh, her boyfriend home. So we went from being uh, Sharon and myself and four dogs to suddenly being Sharon, myself and five kids and four dogs. Mm. Fortunately, we got enough space uh, and it, it was it was really enjoyable. Um, I, I've done one or two videos on this. And I think that it's important during a career to take a break now and again. And I've been, you might call it fortunate or unfortunate, that um, I've had a bad back and I had a back operation and I was off for three months with a back operation. Uh, I've had a bad neck, obviously from dentistry. I was off for six weeks with a bad neck, uh, having surgery. I've had a hip replacement seven years ago. Again, I was off for 10 weeks then. And I've just had my other hip replaced and I've been off now for, again, 10 weeks. So I've had four or five occasions where I've been able to take stock of where I am, um, really, really look into myself, inner self, and look also Mm -hmm. around the profession to see where I want to be. I think it's nice to be able to take stock and go again. Uh, And during that, that stage of, you know, six months being locked down, we did lots of webinars. So we decided to uh, do webinars for the profession to help the profession through. Uh, we did uh, 120 something like webinars. We were doing two or three a day, every single day, uh, completely free of charge to the profession just to try to help it on its way. Um, as you get a little bit older like me, um, it's not just about the, the money, the kudos. You also want to leave a legacy. And uh, I want to be seen to have helped the profession uh, through various stages. And for me, it was an ideal opportunity to, yeah. to help the profession generally and, uh, and do a series of webinars. So we did that. Uh, it also gave me some time to think about where I wanted to take the academy and any other new projects. Uh, and Brilliant. one of the new projects that we started was uh, Tipton Marketplace, which is um, something that is fairly new. And it's a price comparison website for dental products. And um, we know that there are you know, the two or three uh, big distributors of all the dental products. And a lot of the smaller groups don't tend to get uh, the opportunity because the larger groups you know, buy in bulk and, and sell at discount. So we decided with a couple of, uh, of other guys in the profession to start the, the marketplace. And it's taken a long time to get going. Uh, but we've got over 120 manufacturers and distributors uh, in place. Uh, we've got somewhere in the region of 5,000 um, products, and we've got just had a, a, a just over hit our 100th um, person using the the site, and that basically it's free to to use. And you go on, and it's listing all the products from all the different distributors, and basically you just go through it and see which is the the cheapest. In our final section of our chat, I'm going to be hearing more about Kickstart and Paul's going to be explaining how involved he's got and how he's been busily promoting it. The other thing that we've been involved with more recently is, uh, you mentioned you've been in recruitment. Um, We started and worked with the government on the government Kickstart scheme. And uh, we... uh, we, being a training institute, were able to become a gateway for the government. Um, they've got various, as you're probably aware, furlough. They've got various schemes that have been out there during the last uh, six to 12 months. One of them was Kickstart, and that was aimed at getting 18 to 24-year-olds back into employment. And the government yes. were offering grants and uh, uh, many dentists have taken this up. We've uh, we've worked with up to now about 80 dental practices. Um, we've given them anywhere from one up to one practice uh, has taken on 20 staff. 
um, and we supplied those uh, trainees. They're obviously all trainees. They're not trained nurses. They're just young people who want to go into the dental profession. Um, and uh, we've thoroughly enjoyed that part as well. Uh, it's been an interesting journey, um, looking and, and interacting with young people, uh, seeing how many young people there are out there who've got lots of enthusiasm, but also being depressed at times at the number of young people who don't want to get out of bed, uh, don't want to go and get a job and are quite happy just to sit back on, on universal credits. So those yeah. are the two sort of, as well as expanding tips and training, we're, we're looking at going a lot more online. So we're producing uh, online courses that can lead to PG certificates, PG diplomas. Uh, we've expanded into an MSc program so we can now offer an MSc program as well as our uh, EDUQUAL le Level 7 uh, certificates and diplomas. Uh, and again, we're, we're excited about the, uh, the Tipton Marketplace. The Kickstart scheme yeah. will be coming to an end at Christmas time. So again, mm -hmm. just a quick plug, if there's anybody out there who wants some staff um, and wants some staff free of charge to train up, uh, then the scheme is, is finishing by Christmas time. So you need to get in contact. It's all on the website if anybody wants to visit it. Lovely. We'll make sure we flag that up because that's a very worthwhile thing you're doing. There's lots of good tips there for people. Obviously, Tipton Marketplace sounds a very good enterprise. Uh, the Kickstart, marvellous. And of course, your um, overall business. So I think it's been really great to talk to you today. And I had no idea. I knew you were busy, but my goodness me, you're packing it in. So is there anything left that you'd really like to do? Any other unfulfilled ambitions yet before you hang up your boots, so to speak? I think the, 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 the next stage of our development for Tipton Training is to go into the virtual environment. Uh, and there's an awful lot of talk out there at the moment, virtual reality. Uh, my son's involved in virtual reality. He has a virtual reality and sports business. Uh, and he's opened my eyes to the opportunities in virtual reality. Uh, volumetric video um, and artificial intelligence. So we're, we're now going to go on a journey in the next two to three years to see where that can take us with using artificial intelligence, AI, to look at tooth preparations, for instance, to be able to um, have a system where the teacher, um, the lecturer, I know it might make us slightly redundant, but doesn't need to be there all the time looking over the shoulder the, uh, the dentist who's doing the training can just press a few buttons and he's got artificial intelligence telling him what bits he's doing right, what bits he's doing wrong. Um, the ability to go and, uh, again, this, these are things that are, that are open to us now, um, convert what I'm saying into other languages. Um, you know, there's, there's a lot of opportunity in the Far East and I'd love mm -hmm. to get over there. One of the major problems is language. And there's some nice um, software programs now that look at your face and sync your lips with the new language. So it's not really? just that you are uh, being dubbed, but your lips are moving and making the actual um, movements of that particular language. So people can lip read you in another language. Um, so there's, that's the real exciting part for me now in the next five years to take tips and training more global because with AI and volumetric video and VR, you, you can take it more global. Uh, and you can be in Manchester, but having lectures in Taiwan, in Indonesia, in Russia or whatever, in their own language. So, uh, so that's, uh, that, that's where we're going to be heading. Extraordinary. Well, Paul, it's been, a, it's been a real pleasure talking to you today. I'd love to have a look around the Training Academy next time I'm up in Manchester, if you can spare me some time. I'd very much like to have a look around. Um, I shall watch and listen and read with interest everything that's going on in your very busy life. Um, I wish you all the very best of luck and I'd love to talk to you again perhaps in a year's time to see how you're getting on growing the Tipton training empire and thank you very much. Okay, cheers lady, thank you very much. Bye now. Cheers guys, bye.